This is Fountain Pendulum. I've got a interesting video uh, for you guys here, a little bit different. So what we see here are the remains of a Parker 45. Well, I'm just kidding, kind of. These are the parts to a Parker 45. And uh, it has a bit of a story behind it. So when probably like six years ago, I got my first manual typewriter and a friend of the family, um, I was telling her about it and she said, oh, well, I have a few things I can give to you if you'd like them. I have um, an automatic typewriter that I don't use anymore. And I said, I love that. So she brought it for me and along with it, she brought this Parker 45. And the only fountain pen I had at that time um, was a Schaefer calligraphy pen and a parallel, a pilot parallel that I had never used yet. So um, I didn't know too much about um, this kind of fountain pens, but I was like, okay, this will be, this will be interesting. So um, the only ink I had were the cartridges for the Schaefer calligraphy pen and then I had I did dip um dip calligraphy too so I had these and I didn't know the difference I was like you know ink for fountain pen things and I put the ink in this Parker 45. This Parker 45 has this kind of um cartridge converter and you push it to fill it and it has a bladder and um, it didn't work well, obviously, um, and I didn't really understand why, but I was like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Okay. And now, years, many years later, that I'm into fountain pens, I'm like, wow, I totally um, ruined this pen by putting the wrong kind of ink in it. And I've been asking around, like at fountain pen meetups and stuff, what can I do to um, fix this? And I admitted, you know, the fault that I had done. And they're like, oh, everyone's just like, you know, soak it and it that should just fix everything up. Okay, so I soaked it, tried it again, didn't work. Months pass, I soaked it again, uh, soaked it in some of this um, pen ball, pen cleaner, uh, still didn't work. And I just thought, okay, it's a lost cause. Well, lately I was doing a fountain pen collection video and it just disturbed me that I had this fountain pen that was in my collection that I did not want to get rid of or give away because it was a gift from a family friend. And um, I started doing a little research online and I put how to disassemble the Parker 45 because I thought nothing's working. I need to break this thing down. And lo and behold, I find some really helpful information. This is um, the nib section. And then this is the rest of the nib and feed. And I had no idea that you could disassemble this. All I knew was that this was the nib unit and I was trying to soak it through the front and the back and to no avail. So when I found this out, I was like, okay, let's give this another shot. So I soaked it for 12 hours plus in uh, warm water that I continued to just replace whenever I went to the washroom. And then the next day, I went ahead and I got this rubber piece that I had gotten from Goulet Pens. And I tried to unscrew it and I, I finally felt it give way. And I worked it out it was pretty pretty difficult to do and this feed and this nib were just completely covered in black soot cruddy dried up material and when i pulled this feed out it looked like um let me show you under a loop yeah see all those twists, turns, and crevices. Well, when it was all covered with soot and everything, it looked like in the process of 
twisting it out of the of the unit it had cracked and broken so i was like ah well shoot <laughs> so i started doing while this was all soaking still to be cleaned i um i did some research as to where to buy a replacement feed because at this point i'm quite determined to make this work um so at that point this was in here and it still had the nib in it and everything and um then i saw you could just assemble this unit further so after soaking again overnight um in some of this pen cleaner then then i was able to get everything disassembled and i got a fine bristle toothbrush and really gave it a nice clean. And honestly, now everything looks absolutely immaculate. So I'm going to show some things under the loop. So first of all, here on the cap, it says Parker 45. Made in the USA. And that's how I identified what this was. Otherwise, I wouldn't have a sweet clue other than the fact that obviously it's a Parker. Okay, so then this is the feed. And look how clean all those channels are. The stuff that came out of here, I tell you. And this was the important part, cleaning that channel out. Because no ink flow was happening whatsoever. This is the partial hood to the nib and you can see it has threads on it that threads in to the actual section and then here is the nib which is branded with the parker logo but unfortunately it doesn't it's not labeled as to like if it's a fine or medium or whatnot so let me show you what this assembly looks like um, so you can get the full picture. And this is the first time that I'll be reassembling this after disassembling this. So here, you know, the nib and the feed would partner up like this. The curve goes with the curve. There we go. Like that. Let me show you on the loop again. Because it fit in perfectly. It's... If you're not sure, like it's quite a, it kind of slides in. So there's the nib and the belly is underneath. And there's, um, yeah, right here. Let me show you. There, see that crevice that it fits into right there? Oy. So that fits in right there. All right, so. All right, I got that. And then this hooded the I'm kind of figuring this out as I go. So bear with me. OK, cool. So that fit in. Everything's very intuitive once you're feeling it. It looks like that's how it hoods together. So the smaller section goes to the bottom. Okay, so that's the whole nib unit. Now this threads in to here. I don't I don't think you can pick up the threads on that, but you can see like this. And I'm telling you, when this was being cleaned and I was trying to unthread it, oh, it, like, when you look at this, you wouldn't really know that that's two different units. It just looks like one piece. So when I saw the disassembly, a like a diagram online, I was like, are you sure? Like, <laughs> are all these Parker 45s the same? Because I was just like, this is so solid on there. But nope, sure enough, look how it threads in and out. And now it functions absolutely beautiful. What a difference. Like, the threads are so fluid compared to how 
cranky they were. So, oops, um, pardon me. So let's go ahead and fill up this bladder. Now I'm not going to do it the traditional way. I always fill cartridges and cartridge converters with a syringe. It's just so much cleaner. You make sure that way you get a full fill. So that's kind of just the approach and the methods that I employ. So I'm going to fill this up with some Waterman Serenity Blue because that's always a good starting point with a new pen. So I'm using my syringe. We'll give it a um, couple, like a mil here or half a mil. Well, I don't know. Let's go crazy. I'll just fill it up all the way. That way, if the bladder leaks, we'll find out. And I'm very eager to see what happens because the amount of times that I have tried to get this nib to function and to work to no avail, it's kind of distressing. <laughs> so if this works this time, I will be very pleased and very excited. And this now you can see has some threads on it. So that threads into here. And I'm going to be very careful not to push that button while I'm operating this. Okay, tight and secure without over tightening. That's the name of the game with like everything that has threads in life, including fountain pens. Then this threads together. There we go. And finally, the cap. So that's a, a friction fit cap. It doesn't really click. Um, so here is the overall look at it. Um, I looked up the different options that the Parker 45 came in. I'm actually really pleased with this because it's what, I've, what I would have picked for myself with one exception. So we've got a stainless steel body. And you can see it's kind of... Um, brushed on a horizontal plane. So brushed going in this motion. And then we've got a center band that's rather shiny. I showed you the Parker 45 that's engraved right along here. And then we have the top finial, which is a gold color, and then a gold arrow. This is the most beautiful detail in its you know, well known to Parker. And then the one thing that I'm kind of disappointed about that I don't care for at all in this pen is it has this black plastic resin uh, and finial, I guess, um, or end piece. And it like twists, but never comes off. I, I don't, I would be surprised if you could swap this out, but if you could, I would be delighted to. Now, the ones, uh, the Park 45s that came with gold nibs, it's stainless steel all the way to the back. And I think that looks incredibly beautiful. I just think this is such a lovely looking pen. And then that plastic just kills it for me. What do you guys think? Do you agree or am I overreacting to this whole <laughs> situation? So um, I'll pull this off again. I guess that's the other thing is um, this technically matches with the resin, the black resin grip section. So, but still, yeah. Um, I don't ha I don't believe I have any fountain pens that have uh, a steel or stainless steel or brass or anything grip section. I'm not sure how I would like it. So I'm kind of fine with this because you're not really going to be looking at it all that much when you're writing with it. But I think it just, it's this part that I, that I don't really care for. So, all right, I'm going to see if some ink flow can happen. All right, it's coming out kind of watery. So I'm going to work on priming this and then we'll do a writing sample. 
Okay, so I was able to prime this just by putting the back end of the nib on here. And also I just gave it a very, the um, cartridge converter, I just gave it a very light press. And I'm super excited that this is actually flowing. The, I, the ability um, through just doing some research online to be able to bring this fountain pen back to life is amazing to me. I just, I'm so excited. Taking something that's completely unusable, completely broken, and then being able to actually put it to paper like I'm about to do for the very first time, it's so exciting and it's very gratifying. And I don't, I couldn't find any labeling on what this nib size is, but from the look of it, I'd say it's either a fine or a medium. What do you think? Would you call that a fine or a medium? I'm going to guess it's a fine based off the fact that this is a U.S. brand. Um, it would definitely be a medium if it was, you know, uh, Japanese or something like that. So... Oh, I don't know. Now that I write with it within within one uh, line, it looks more like a medium when I'm not writing so large. The ink's really coming too. This is a pretty generous amount of ink flow. Ah, not too bad actually. Felt like though. It's not a very smooth nib, uh, surprisingly. It is a steel nib, but it's um, it's really not. I I wouldn't categorize it as being very smooth. It's not not smooth. It's just not. It's got quite a bit of drag. Drag is the good word because. It's not feedback. Feedback, I personally, um, in my mind, feedback is more of a graphite pencil feel where it's it feels like texture on the page. And to me, drag is more like there's something slowing the, the flow of the nib down. Not the ink flow, but just how the nib runs across the page. It has a drag or it has a resistance, something that slows it down. So anyway, I am just so excited to have this actually writing and working. And uh, when I was cleaning out the bladder too, I gave that a flush with the pen cleaner just um, filled it up with pen cleaner, gave it about 30 minutes, like the direction said, and then flushed it out. And the reason I didn't leave that overnight is because this pen cleaner seems quite potent. It definitely smells like chemical. I think it might have ammonia in it or something. And those bladders are made of plastic. And it's possible that if you leave that soaking too long, it might dry it out and kind of shorten or diminish the lifespan of that plastic bladder. So that's why I just gave it 30 minutes. And also, uh, I mentioned like all the gunk and crud that came out of the feed and stuff. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of blue that came out also. Um, so hopefully everything's like all dissolved and squeaky clean and I think quite nicely restored. But once again, I am just so happy to have this pen back in working condition. So now I can happily say that the pens that I own are all working and operational.
So that's really fun. Thanks for watching this video. Um, this is the first like pen restoration, if you want to call it that, that I've worked on. And uh, it's very rewarding and very gratifying to be able to go through it and complete it and have it work and turn out properly <clears throat> in the end. And even if I had to go online and buy a replacement feed or nib unit, it still would have been nice. But I'd say way more gratifying the fact that all the parts were um, functional and not broken and that I was able to write with it uh, within not too long. Uh, the journey was frustrating, but I hope that this was helpful for anyone who has a Parker 45 that needs some work because what was happening before was I'd try to fill it up with ink and it just never would write. And I was assuming that the bladder was all clogged up with ink, but indeed it was the feed, which makes more sense. But no one really was onto that when I described the issue to them or showed them the pen either. So I hope this is helpful, whether you have a Parker 45 that needs some uh, attention and fixing or other vintage pens too. Whether you bought them used or you know that you've used some kind of India ink or something that you weren't supposed to, there is still hope for restoration. So thank you for watching this video. And if you have some feedback to share on what you've worked on or some restoration stories that you'd like to share, put them in the comments below. We can all learn from each other's experiences. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy your vintage pens.